Hi, hi everyone and welcome, 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 welcome. It's another great episode of Women of Influence and I am your host Anula De Freitas welcoming you to yet another time where we're going to explore the journey of a woman, a brave woman who has made a bold step to have the wonderful title of Woman of Influence. As women, we have many titles, we, we wear many hats, but most importantly, we do things that allow us to flow in our purpose, even if it means that times we go through challenges, even if it means we divert from the course or the, the plan that we have for our lives, we still ensure that we fulfill purpose in everything that we do. And today is no exception. We have an amazing young woman who is going to share her experience. I don't even want to tell you her name. I would like her to introduce herself to us because I don't think I could give as much credit as is due to this wonderful, amazing woman. So amazing woman, please introduce yourself to my audience. Hi everyone, so my name is Crystal Estelle and I am the owner of Crystal Beauty. And it's a privilege to be here, Anola, with a woman of influence like yourself as well. So I'm so glad that you invited me and I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for accepting the offer. I remember when I first saw Crystal, I was like, whoa, what a beautiful woman. And it is truly a privilege to have a beautiful woman on set to truly beautify the set this evening. So I am so thankful. For those persons who are here, please grab your pen, your notebook, and take some notes. And I want at the end of this that you learn something from this entire experience. Even if you're a man listening to this, there's still a lot of powerful nuggets that are going to come out of this session. So don't think that it's gender bias. It's really for those persons who have a desire to go forth in their lives and to see the will of God and the purpose of God established. So, Crystal, tell us a little about Crystal's Beauty. What do you offer at, um, at Crystal's Beauty? All right. So, Crystal Beauty, it is a, a beauty uh, company, as you all can tell by the name. So, we focus on all things beauty, mostly uh, makeup. That's where I started, but I'm kind of branching away from just the makeup into more holistic beauty, encouraging others to embrace their beauty, their natural beauty, um, in whatever way, shape, or form that is for you. So however you choose to identify with your beauty, it's really just a, a, a business that empowers women mostly, but also men, because we are all beautiful. We are all created beautifully. And the aim of the business really is just to empower, encourage true beauty, because Beauty is a part of us in our everyday life. Wherever we turn, there is beauty to be seen, to be beholded. So I I just, it came from that place. That's where Crystal Beauty was booted, from a place of beauty. And not just on a physical level, but also from a spiritual level. Because if we're honest, beauty starts from within and it is radiated outward. So it's a holistic beauty, beauty of the inside and beauty of the outside. Awesome. I love that. So tell me, Crystal, so have you always wanted to be in this field or is it something that you just got pushed into as life happens at times? Um, I wouldn't say I always wanted to be in this industry, mainly because growing up, I was told, you know, it's not sustainable. It's not... Um, worth it like you should do something that more stable like be a doctor or a lawyer or you know more of the common jobs not saying that doctors and lawyers are common you all are definitely needed and and respected you know but um i was more i i did sciences all my life so i don't really have any beauty background but being a woman of god a child of god um God created me to be a part of this industry. I know it may sound a little weird, but um, definitely beauty was who God created me to be beautiful and um, to just present beauty from his perspective. And uh, I believe that 
no no matter what I would have done in this life it would have always led me back to this point of beauty I loved I loved beauty since I was a little girl it was instilled in me it was how I was created I loved makeup I loved fashion I loved modeling I loved all things beauty as a little girl and I kind of hid that part of myself because I was told it wasn't good enough but um, as I identified with Christ and I came into who I was created to be it it came forward and even when I try to run from it, it it always catches back up with me so I just had to embrace it and still learning to embrace it as well awesome I love that I I've seen a pattern with some of the persons I've spoken to in the past it's like sometimes you run in a different direction and Christ just brings you right back to the center of where he wants you to be sometimes the things that you would have seen at a younger age that you may have diverted and say okay in your case you went into the area of science now that passion for beauty is what is um your calling at this time you know you're really thriving in this area and i'm happy that you're actually you know functioning in an industry that i think you could call home even if you're moving from makeup into something else which i'm hoping you might share in the interview but if you don't we would wait the surprise i am happy that you are actually flowing in that area because i'm sure you feel happy and comfortable in it do you most days yeah, yeah do you have any regrets that you're not uh, you know functioning in the area of science or you know having one of those more sought after um professions early on i i had regrets not so much because of science but not taking up beauty sooner actually but i a lot of the times when i sit and i try to wallow about it the holy spirit checks me with a swiftness that even i can't deny i remember most recently i was doing something to propel myself in the beauty industry and i sat in the class and i honestly wanted to blame my dad and be like oh my gosh, you made me do sciences. Why? I should have just done cosmetology from the beginning. And the Holy Spirit was like, "Uh uh-uh. And I would be so honest, guys. When I sat in that class, it was so much science. (laughs) So much science. And I myself was amazed. I was like, okay, I know all of these things. I have been exposed to all of these things. And it just reminded me of the scripture verse that says, you know, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose, that nothing is wasted. So all that I have learned in science is is actually working for my good right now. I am I in that class. I was ahead of my classmates because of the advantage I had of having a degree in science, you know, and I was able to help them with things that was a little easier for me. I was able to help them understand concepts that came a little easier to me because of that knowledge that I had prior. So it worked out, you know, so no regrets. Even when I try to regret it, the Holy Spirit reminds me that no, nothing is being wasted here. It's all going to work together. Well, I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy to hear that. So right now you have an advantage based on the foundation that you had in the field of science. So really and truly, it's no regrets. You just, you know, it's like you started in that direction, but God had something else. So you're keeping in the area of science, but you're branched off into, to, you know, beauty and makeup. And I look forward to seeing what God is going to do for him. You know, Paul, I know you might be doing your own line of makeup and stuff in the future. You never, ever know. I'm just waiting to see what God is going to do, Christelle. Yeah, I really am waiting. Oh, sorry. You never know. You never know, honestly. Yes, that is so true. So how many years have you been in business now? Okay, so this actually started while I was in my program. So it started, I would say, in 2012, where it wasn't Crystal Beauty. It was really just Crystal doing makeup randomly for friends, family members, and then they would tell their friends. And it started that way. And it kind of just grew. And in, I would say, 2015, on my, um, my 25th birthday, is when I really... Was that 2015 or 2017? 2017 sorry that was 2017 when i turned 25 Ooh, forget it um so y'all could do the math and figure out how old i'll be this year but in 2017 i launched into crystal beauty you know i'd even share with you guys crystal beauty actually had another name it was my makeup story 
I'm a person I like to um, carry people on journeys with me. I never like to approach people like I have it all together and I have all the answers, but I do invite people into my journey to see how I grow. And, and Crystal Beauty is nothing different you know it's it's my journey that i'm inviting you to take a take part in and hopefully it will inspire you as well to grow in your own beauty journey so yeah. if I, um that my makeup story before and then that blossomed into crystal beauty and now even now talking about it i understood why the holy spirit kind of pushed me away from it just being my makeup story because that would have boxed me into the makeup narrative which mm. I'm now trying to get out of so mm. crystal beauty is more holistic you know is it could be anything beauty related so yeah that's crystal beauty is officially going to be five years this year and November 25th so that's also my 30th birthday so yeah. five years crystal beauty five um 30 years for me as a person so yeah. um this year would be a celebration i love it i love i love it i you know it's the whole way that the god just uses all the experiences to build the story of our lives and i like the way that you said that you you are transparent letting persons know that you don't have it all together because, you know, persons might be looking at us and thinking, yeah, Crystal has it all together. Anola has it all together. But by coming out and letting persons know, I don't have it all together, but I'm still doing this. I think that really makes a great and powerful message for persons who are listening and looking at this interview today. I want to ask you something. What makes Crystal's beauty stand out from the rest? I wouldn't want to say competition, but what makes you stand out from the rest? Okay, so I think there's one thing mainly that makes me stand out. I think it's the way I approach beauty. I don't think anybody has approached beauty from a biblical standpoint. So in whatever I do at Crystal Beauty, God is always present. He's always invited. He's always a part of it. I pray with my clients first sometimes. Um, definitely, I always pray before um, classes, definitely. And... Um, you know, I, I talk about beauty from God's perspective, you know, and what he's been revealing to me. I even use scripture verses to show people why beauty is important and why it should be important to you because it's important to God. You know, I feel like beauty has gotten a bad rap sometimes as um, in the church and in the world. And I'm just here doing my part to represent beauty from a Christ perspective. So that's one thing that helps me to stand out from people. Because when I tell people, you know, I teach beauty from a, a biblical standpoint, they're like, what? Beauty from a biblical standpoint? How do you even do that? And when I start telling them, they're really intrigued by it, you know, and I believe that by doing that, I could actually win souls for Christ. You know, people could identify with god because of beauty and and i i don't think it's any less there's nothing that god can't use to to glorify himself you know and he will be glorified through beauty and i'm just um the open vessel that he's using to do that so that's one thing and then another thing that helps me stand out is my shop with me <laughs> um Right. my shop with me product service i should say it's a service that i offer to clients where i do the shopping for you you for your makeup needs i recommend the products that you may want to try based on your skin based on your desires your overall look what you're trying to achieve and i will actually go on to the shopping you could come with me if you're local in trinidad and um, we go we pick out the products and it's a way to bond to bond with your clients in a more uh, relaxed place and also it helps um, take out the the disillusion of shopping for beauty and for makeup especially for uh, people that are not makeup enthusiasts like myself you know like I would spend hours just researching products or looking at videos not everybody like doing that so i kind of take out the guesswork of shopping for makeup for my clients or anybody who wants that any um actually so that's something that i do that i don't think <laughs> a lot of people if anybody else really does you know so that's definitely something that sets me apart that's really and wonderful I how you say sorry sorry i love doing it as well i love serving mm -hmm. others so. yes for real because I'm loving how you see you teach beauty from a biblical perspective. I remember the first time you shared with the story of Esther and tied it in. I was like, wow, I didn't think of all of that. I mean, I know this story. But as you shared it, I recognize, okay, don't take 
your appearance for granted because the way we you know put ourselves out there could either turn somebody away or make them come to us and embrace us and the message that we bring so i love the way that you tie that whole story in and it could be you know used for evangelism as well because somebody who might not know the lord might feel as though okay, if i come into the fold i may have to throw away certain things i can't do this anymore but you show them that if you love beauty use it to glorify god in everything that you do so i love that and this shop with me definitely that would be a service i would need because i won't even know what to pick up i wouldn't even know so i think that is very good to know that you offer that service and you offer it to persons in trinidad what about persons in tobago can persons yeah. in tobago access that service from you yes definitely people in tobago they access it on the side of i would do the shopping in trinidad or i could recommend products that are available i know sometimes it could be a little um limited with what is available in tobago so what i do for my tobago followers my tobago beauties is mm -hmm. i would do the shopping at pennywise wonderful world all the beauty places available to us here in trinidad um i would go i would price the products i would send you a cost list and um once you um de uh, deliver on the cost the the finances mm -hmm. i would do the shopping and then i would have the products delivered to you in tobago Wow, that's good. So I don't have to feel as though I'm not a part of the whole beauty experience by being in Tobago. You can get the source, the, the items in front of that and get it to me in Tobago. I'm loving it. I'm loving the convenience of what you are offering to us as, um, as persons who are interested in doing business with you. I absolutely, I absolutely so what I want to ask you, what is one major challenge you've had? One major challenge you've had since you've been in operation for almost five years now. Okay, so one major challenge is I, as I said, I was a science student. I never did any business courses, like not one, not mm -hmm. one in my entire school journey. I mm -hmm. failed. I did one business course in um in ue but it was more economics it wasn't like how to start a business or how to build a business or anything like that so that has been and is to some extent still a challenge for me developing that business mindset and um you know just branching off from being a science student into uh the business realm it has been sometimes it could have been discouraging for me especially in learning how to brand myself on Instagram on Facebook how to um, get clients to engage with me um, just persons in general to engage with me and to um, to really connect with the business on a social media standpoint um, so what I did to kind of overcome that challenge is I went back to school for a semester and I did three business courses and it did help me to um kind of tap into that business side i believe that we all have some basic reserves within us that we could tap into you know for all things god is a a god full of potential and if we tap into that potential that is in god we would be able to to do things so i kind of tapped into the business aspect and i'm seeing the fruit of it now my business is growing and um, I'm able to connect and engage a little more on social media. I think social media mainly was like one of my biggest challenges. I'm not a big social media person. I don't post frequently. So it has been challenging, but, you know, just learning how to go about it and how to brand yourself, how to um, allow your business to grow even and not be trapped into boxes. You know, that was that was definitely something I had to learn along the way and still that is awesome. I am really happy that, you know, you've been taking the steps to ensure that you're equipped to handle the various aspects of business, because I know how daunting that could be moving from one area, like pure science, and now coming into business and knowing how to handle the finances, the marketing, everything related to that. So I'm hoping that persons will see, even if you are you have to pivot into something different, using a foundation that you've built already in your case science 
that there are resources out there that one could tap into if you may need to go back to school. Some people I noticed are doing like courses online, you know, so that they could still manage life and learning this new skill or getting this new qualification to equip them for their business. And I find YouTube has a lot of videos, you know, and there are lots of groups and organizations too that we can join, that we can connect with persons and and learn. So I'm I'm really happy that you're doing that. That's a really good, a really good move. What I want to ask you, I remember the first time I heard about you, there was something that truly intrigued me because it seemed like a recipe, uh, not a recipe, like a menu, a menu course. I'm not sure if you still do it, but it's as though you could have choose like a like an appetizer course, like a main, you know, something like that. Could you tell me a little more about it? Because at that time, I did not know you. But now that we're talking, like, could you tell me a little more about it? Because for me, that was unique. I never heard of anyone doing it. Maybe there are people. But tell me about it, Priscilla. Okay, so I do makeup classes. And, you know, sometimes people may not want to learn everything about makeup. Also, trying to learn everything about makeup is a lot. You know, some people may think it's just slap some makeup on your face and you're ready to go, but it's actually very technical. You have to learn color theory and placement and all of these things, you know. So um, what I did is to kind of take away all that technicality is I broke down all the different parts of makeup. So if you are interested in just learning how to do your foundation, you could do that, right? So what I did, I made a course menu, like a literal course menu, and I broke them up into appetizers, entrees, and desserts. And um, so you could pick like these appetizers would all um, obviously be like things that would be easier to learn. So like how to fill in your eyebrows, lipstick application, like the easier things. And then the entrees would have been like the heavier parts of makeup application, like foundation, concealer, contouring, highlighting. So basically what the class is, is, is a build your own class. So you could go to the course menu and you choose your appetizer. If you want to learn all of them, you could. If you want to learn all the entrees, you could. But you basically pick your own, you pick your, your your entree your appetizer your dessert and you build your class and the sessions usually run for about two hours and um you have your class you learn what you want to learn you don't have to learn everything it's based on you and what you want and not so much what i want to teach you so you get to choose you get to decide what you want to know or not know and, you know, that could take a lot of the guesswork out of it as well and just help you build your own personal style because you don't have to do all of the the elaborate things if you just want to learn how to fill in your eyebrows and, and do a little eyeshadow and some lipstick to go to work, all of that. So the class is really for you. It's, it's built with the consumer in mind, with the students in mind, and not so much me as a makeup artist. Because sometimes, you know, I could forget that um, this person has never interacted in makeup in the way that I have some pe- some students come to me and they have no prior experience with makeup. So um, just thinking about it from a person with being an amateur in the beauty realm, thinking about it from that aspect is where the idea of breaking down classes came from, you know, from just having to learn everything all at once. I love that. I love the way how you design courses with the the um the students in mind so you're serving what the the student desires you're not just giving them everything and say take that it's like you choose them based on what your appetite is calling for i love i love that idea i i can't wait for you to share how persons can reach out to you because i am so super excited now i don't know anything about filling in eyebrows i mean i just rub on some lip gloss hair going on but i'm like i'm looking at your face i'm like wow and as you're sharing about the various things about the color theory, you really needed to have that foundation in science to give you that advantage. Because so I can't even match things properly, my goodness. I <laughs> I might need to go to the makeup class for dummies, really starting <laughs> basic, basic. But I'm really happy to hear that you offer that service because I'm sure that's something that lots of people might be interested in learning how to do the eyebrows learning what colors would be working well for them because for me the closest i come to makeup really is walking through the makeup aisle to go and get something else because i just don't know 
what to get. You know, so I'm happy that you have that service. Tell me this. A little birdie told me that you have an upcoming event. Tell me about it because I don't want to miss it and I don't want the viewers to miss it as well. Tell me more about it yourself. Okay, so I'm sure everybody is familiar with the the event or the concept of sip and paint where you go to a venue, they show you a picture and you have to recreate it on a canvas and you sip your alcoholic or non-alcoholic drink. So it's based, it's a spin on sip and paint. So it's sip and paint your face, right? Our canvas is our beautiful faces where um, it's virtual definitely right now because of COVID and, and things of that nature. The event will be via Zoom. Uh, so we will be joining on the Zoom platform and I will present you with a picture and you have to take the inspiration of the picture and recreate it on your face with whatever tools and products you have. So it's this Friday, March 18th at 7.30 p.m. AST and EST and 6.30 p.m. CST. The cost of the event is $80 TT uh, or 15 US. Yeah, so. I, I love I love that. I love how you put this CST, the EST, the AST, the all, all the T's so nobody would be wondering which time zone is this going to be held at? Tell me, for the ATTT dollars, how a person is going to pay you? What are the options available to get this cash onto you? Okay, so for local persons, Trinidad and Tobago, you all can make a deposit into my account in Republic Bank, or you can pay via PayPal for my foreign people and my local person. So you have two options, um, mm -hmm. local bank account or PayPal. Okay, so for somebody who's interested in attending this session, mm -hmm. are there things that they need to walk along with? Because if we'll be putting on makeup, are you going to be providing them with that list when they can reach out to you? Or Yes. And it's, how you... Sorry, yeah? the list is no. also available on my Instagram and Facebook pages, but you don't have to go out and get a whole bunch of things. I would say definitely, definitely what you would need to have is some eyeshadows and maybe some lipstick and some blush. And you'll be surprised at um, how much things you could get done with just some eyeshadow and some lipstick and some blush. If you have foundation, great. If you just have powder, great. Like don't let what you have or what you don't have be a hindrance. It's really to spark creativity you know sometimes we could be so rigid in how we see creativity and beauty so it's really just to have fun it's not about being perfect or anything and a bonus you learn some makeup tips i'll be sharing tips and tricks of how to achieve certain things certain looks and you'll be getting a live demo of me putting on my makeup as well so you know that's a lot for 80 dollars. that's that's a lot because makeup classes could be up there in price so yeah. While this is not a full-on technical class, you will still learn a lot. Yeah, because I, I heard someone sharing once that, you know, the, your eyebrows really makes a big statement and changes the whole appearance of your face. So I'm thinking if for $80 you're learning that, that is like a big game changer. So $80 is a small price for such a big difference that you could make in your life so i'm really happy about that i'm definitely on board with that and i'm hoping that lots of persons would hear it and run into it because i mean for 80 dollars to be able to get those stuff and have the good company and learn how to do all these things i think would be awesome is there would you need any special type of mirror or is a regular mirror you have at home going to work well a regular mirror once you have okay. good lighting and a mirror the lighting could be just you being in front of a, a light bulb at your home, but you want to be able to see properly. Yeah. Um, and a mirror, a regular mirror is fine. You know, you want something that, even if you have to hold a mirror, that's fine too. Or if you want to buy a standing mirror, so you, don't, you could have access for your both hands, but most of us only use one hand, right? <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah. Whatever you have, don't let what you don't have be a hindrance, you know? And it, this could be a way for you to, if it, you know, get an into makeup or something you were desiring. This is a fun and easy way to do it and economic way as well. Yeah, I'm really happy. What has the response been so far? Have persons been excited about, about, yeah. Yes, so really, really excited. In fact, some people, they use the shop with me 
uh, method, the Shop With Me service to get their products for the event, you know, so it was a, they're all excited, they can't wait, they, people have been asking questions, like what we need to have, how is it going to be, are we so excited, so I'm excited, you know, this is my first event that I am hosting myself, and I'm really excited, and it definitely won't be the last, um, this event, Sip and Paint Your Face, is something I intend to do frequently so if you can't make it this time just look out for the next flyer it will be soon so you know don't miss it it will be worth it definitely because i'm holding you to it, it cannot be the last christella it definitely cannot be the last so i'm hoping that at the end of this event we're gonna have some pictures you know persons will be willing to you know to send in pictures of their experience and to share their experience. So those persons who are not able to attend this event will be able to plug into your, your social media platforms and see all that they miss and ensure that they're there for the next event. I wanna ask you, what, what words of advice would you give to somebody who's listening to you right now and thinking, influence? I don't think that I'm really a person of good influence. What what words of advice would you give to somebody like that? Just letting them know that they have great influence in them and it's time to shine. Okay, so the first thing is that we all have influence. So don't ever lie to yourself and think that you don't have influence. While some people may be more influential than others, we all have some measure of influence. It could be the three people that we live at at home with, you know, like, so don't be, don't be, um, don't think that you don't have any influence, whether it's one person or one million people, treat the one person as you would treat the million people when it comes to your influence. And being influential, I think one of the most important things is just to be yourself, be you, be who you truly are. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to emulate somebody else now we could have role models we can have people that we we admire and we could take tips and things from their lives but the truth of the matter is to really be a, a true person of influence you need to be your authentic self that's the however god built us we could pick up on fake you know, human beings, we could tell if somebody is being fake or not. You know, some of us may be a little more discerning than others. But I think for the people that we really see making a difference in the world, they are themselves entirely. They are open and honest about their shortcomings, their strengths. They share openly. And I think, you know, to be an influential person, you need to be disciplined, consistent, and focused on who you are. Stay in your lane, you know, and just be you. Do the best, be the best you you could be. And the world would see it. I love that. Be the best you that you can be and the world would see it. I love that. As we come to the end, can you share with, with me and the audience how we can contact you after this interview. All right. So there are three or four ways that you can contact me. You can contact me at 868-352-3255. You can call me, WhatsApp me, iMessage me <laughs> at that number. Or you can DM me at Chriselle underscore beauty. That's my Instagram page. And then my Facebook page is just Chriselle beauty. And the last way you can contact me is via email at chriselbeauty at gmail.com. Great. Can you say that for me again? Just in case anybody came in on the latter part of that. Yeah. All right. So the contact number is 868-352-3255. Yeah. You, you can contact me at that number via WhatsApp, iMessage, or phone call. Then you can... Uh, private message me at chriselle underscore beauty that's on instagram you can follow my page there as well you could also follow the page on facebook that's chriselle beauty and you could message me from either one of those platforms and the last way is email chriselle beauty at gmail.com thank you so so much so i'm now giving you an opportunity if there's anything you would like to share with the audience anything that just came to your mind that you want to just leave with the audience this is your opportunity to do so okay so the last thing i would say is 
you are beautiful don't let anybody tell you that anything otherwise like i know that the world has painted beauty to be this very clear-cut thing but the way our creator created us beauty is not clear-cut we are all created beautifully and um mm-hmm. we shouldn't demonize anybody else's beauty because it doesn't look like what the world said beauty is so i i want to challenge you to look yourself in the mirror and really see the time the effort the intentionality that god took into building you creating you to look the way that you looked he he chose everything about you intentionally he chose your hair the color of your hair your color of your skin the color of your eyes everything about you physically spiritually emotionally was intentional by god he's not a god that he just does things haphazardly he's very intentional so start looking at yourself from that place of intentionality you know in psalms 139 um david said you know you created me fearfully and wonderfully made and he also went on to say you know god knitted us together when you think about somebody knitting how detailed how um how focused they had to be about what they're doing and how easy it is to um to make mistakes as a human being but god doesn't make mistakes and he took his time because he could have just threw us together quickly but he knitted us he sat and he took his time as god he took his time to create us and i want people to start seeing themselves as such as somebody that was knitted intentionally in love by the creator by god of the heavens jesus christ he created you and he loves you just as you are so don't let anybody tell you otherwise you are fearfully and beautifully made and you are all beautiful and as for you two men you all are beautiful and handsome i know some men might like the idea of being called beautiful so let me just say handsome right so you're fearfully and wonderfully made look yourself in the mirror and remind yourself of that every day that the god of the universe the god that created the birds of the air the fish of the sea the beast of the field the flowers of the field as well you know he took his time and knitted me together and when he was finished he said it is good and if you look at the i'm going to get a little biblical here and you guys if you Either actually look at the hebrew word for good in that in that area i think it's tub that word is actually sorry about that could actually be translated into beautiful as well so when he looked at us he said it is beautiful so remind yourself of that every day you are beautiful thank you so much i love the way you included the men because i don't want them to feel as though well this is just for the she's it's for all of us a woman of influence making impact that would trickle down to everyone who hears it so both women men even the youths that will be listening to this know that you are beautiful crystal i thank you so much for taking the time out to be here with us this evening, this morning, whatever time persons are listening to this. I truly pray the blessings of God over you, over your business, over everything that you set your mind to do. And I pray that God's divine purpose for your life is fulfilled. I love the way how you got into the word and shared the word because it's truly the foundation of everything for us to understand our purpose. So I thank you once again. Remember, guys, you can check her out on the various social media platforms connect with her this friday if you're hearing this recording um before the event make sure you're in it if you're hearing it after plug in for the next one reach out to her and i thank this mighty woman of influence for being a guest on this episode of Woman of Influence. I'm your host, Anula DeFreitas. And Crystal, I want to give you an open invitation to come back again and to share what has been happening because we don't want you to just, you know, fall off the radar after this interview. You need to come in and tell us, you know, this is what I'm doing. Get us excited, get us in the know because we want to be a part of your wonderful, wonderful journey. God bless you, Richie, and goodbye to everyone. Until the next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye.